All right, here we go. Hey, by the way, no Howley Heidi today. I'm Bro. so, dude, she's, she's working a real job that she's, yeah. I'll let her tell you about it. Thank goodness. Thank, thank goodness that she's not in the chat, dude, or not on the show because she kicked our ass in fantasy. Don't tell anybody. Oh, <laughs> you know what? It's so crucial picking your um, power surfer, isn't it? But it's so important. Yeah, I think I think power surfer, and I think I think making sure that no one gets eliminated. What up, Luke? Yeah. Luke is in the house. Um, guy, I'm really excited to talk about a lot of things. But hey, guess what? We are live. Welcome everybody to the current surf show. I'm old surf dad, and Damas y Caballeros, me gustaría presentarla el Tibon. Hey, gracias, amigo. <laughs> what is happening? That is an El Salvadorian. Welcome to the show. Hey, usually we have Holly Heidi, but she's not here to control the chat and to keep us in line and keep us on schedule and do all the uh, brilliant things that she does. So um, she'll be back in the next one, but go ahead and get into the chat. Tell us where you're from. And I also want to say, T-Bone, that this is a podcast. This is a rebroadcast. If you miss this live show right now, you can see it on YouTube. And if you make a comment in the comment section after the live show, I will personally answer it and uh, get you caught up on the chat. So anyway, thanks everybody for joining us. Kitty, thanks for staying up late. I think you had to set an alarm for this. Luke San Clemente in the house. Love that. We're going to talk all about the 2%. Um, and T-Bone, what's up, dude? Hey, buddy. Oh, mate, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit jealous at the moment. I wish I was in El Salvador because winter has, has come at home in the southwest of Western Australia. It's uh, raining. It's onshore. There's a lot of swell. Um, mm. Dream. Dreaming of Indo right now, or dreaming of wherever you are right now, just to be in in warm weather again. Yeah, El Salvador. You know, be careful what you dream of because it is so freaking hot and humid here. And I'm just going to tell this quick story: is I was shooting yesterday, and I didn't bring water, which was a, a big mistake. And I'm shooting next to um, Betty Lou's mom, who's super cool and friendly and she was talking about Tahiti and I said hey is it as hot as is it as hot in Tahiti as it is here and she's like no way this is kicking our she didn't say ass but it was kicking my ass on the beach and and they put all kinds of liquids in bags here and I'm like I'm usually like what you're gonna give me a bag of milk or a bag of water or a bag? and dude I couldn't like drink enough of those bags of waters that people were giving out man um, uh -huh. some of the local, some of the locals like felt sorry for me and I got some water. So today I was fully prepared, had some water and we're going to talk all about El Salvador and what I've seen the last couple of days. T-Bone, I've seen some pretty good surfing and some pretty average waves. Yeah. Um, and, um, I do have a little bit of a sunburn, but more importantly, like I have this wave that's inspired by Roca corn on my hair. Check that thing spot. out. You can get <laughs> so uh Greg Smith from Melbourne. Welcome, brother. Good to see you in the chat. It's 10 30 at night. No, in the morning. What am I talking morning. about? And T-Bone, it's 8 30 for you, not in the morning west west Oz time. Nice, man. Well, I say we jump in. You know what we're gonna do first? We're gonna talk about um, Tahiti and I don't have a lot of slideshow stuff. We're just going to jump right in. Dude, we talked about having our top three moments each. And I want you all in the chat to jump in and tell us what your favorite moments of Tahiti and our rough schedule. You can see it on the ticker on the bottom. We're going to talk about Tahiti. We're going to get into the Sur City El Salvador Pro, talk about the surf forecast and make our picks. So starting with Tahiti, T-Bone, Tell me some of your favorite or tell me what your favorite moment from Tahiti was. Oh, so many. I mean, how good was it to watch a contest with mm. you? 
Uh, I don't think I don't think there's many on the tour that didn't get tubed in this event. True. And I, I was thinking afterwards, that's when I would pay to watch. If they ever went to pay per view, I would definitely mm -hmm. pay to watch that. Um, so many great moments, mate. I, you know, I was stoked for R Ramsey Bookham. I was that close on changing the pick, but he's had, you know, he had, he finally qualified for the CT, got injured, back on tour. Totally. I don't think, I don't think he's in that top three tube riding, you know, skills like John or Gabby, but man, did he slice and dice, played with the foam ball, you know, made it all the way to the semi. So I was stoked for Ramsey. I love his energy. Totally. I, I love his comment about when he lost his heat against Italy. He was prepared to, to go out on his shield and and that's 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 epic. So Ramsey was you know I love watching him. He got so many good good scores. Um, he beat my boy Kelly, but uh, that's that's all good. <laughs> yeah, and that is what put Holly Heidi over the top. And her fantasy team was picking Ramsey, and he's just impressed me. I have to be honest. Remember, there was a guy in here. I don't know if he's in the chat, but there was a guy who was a big Ramsey fan from Morocco, and I got to yeah. give him props because he was pumping him up. Remember that? And I was like, yeah, but he's not. He's not a two brighter guy. I think of as a backside slasher completely proved me wrong the guy was ripping and the guy deserved what that was a semi-final wait was that a quarters so no he was in the semis dude um what a great result for him at his first ct comp competition um yeah. i can't believe it and we've got all kinds of we've got all kinds of comments here we're going to get into ramsey versus kelly should have been a 10 I love the the one I have to say this about Ramsey is he was bumping around inside on that foam ball on two man. sides of the wall. It was Incredible. it was nuts, man. And there's another one that I don't think got as much credit. I can't remember as a nine. It, he took off so far behind the wave on the foam ball, and he I think it was like he backdoored it if you can even backdoor it in Tahiti, and he went through the foam ball and made it out. It wasn't quite as big, but it was just it was so compressed and he came out. It was a, that was a nine as well. So just big props to that guy. And um, I already see a bunch of people yeah. saying Tati's wave. Um, you oh, go ahead. I mean, yeah, I mean, in my top three, I mean, Ramsey was the first one. And then obviously Tati's, I mean, that heat, I mean, not only Tati's 10, but it was just epic to see more women laying it down you know, it, it's it's more than than Molly and Katie and Betty. You know, it's Taddy, it's Fahini, it's you know, it's a lot of the girls charge. So that ten was she took off so deep. That was such a pit. Yeah, epic. and she got she got a nine earlier in the event that I was like, okay, that's groundbreaking. But that ten was something completely different. And I loved what you said. I I. I love what you talked about. It's not just the young women. It's it's Tati pushing it too. It's tier C picks pushing it too. Um, that was my favorite heat, I think, maybe of the whole event because it had so much action. There were broken oh. boards. There was getting caught inside. There was yeah. a comeback by Vahine. Like she's like, she got a 10. There's no way she's coming back. And and there's the wave. You know, it's just like all the drama in that 30 minute. 35 minutes, whatever it was. That was, uh, I love that you, heat. That was one of my favorite heats of the year. Would you say that's the best tube ridden by a, a female in, in competitive surfing? Mm, I can't think of any better. Um, be up there, right? It, it was I, a 10. It'd have to be. Yeah, I think, well, I want to say Moana, but I, I'm not so sure. She got a decent I'm trying to think back i don't think it was a 10. i'm reaching on old information if anybody has that that would be great yeah. hold on i'm trying to pull the chat back up hey, mate, that would be a super heat there. moana and uh vahina <laughs> i know i know what they, i don't know if you saw this but the wsl they're doing this like super heat thing i can't believe they're sponsoring it but they're 
sending people to J-Bay to do this superheat. What they should do is have a superheat 1v1, Moana versus Mahine at Pipe and at Tiopu. And like they one in the summer, one in the winter and call the queen of Polynesia or something. I don't know. How epic would that be? Oh, it'd be full on. I'm going to tell you one of mine. Um, my top uh, my top pick or my my favorite from Tahiti was the Brazilian storm. And, and not that I'm a, I mean, I'm a fan of the Brazilians. I respect their talent, but I'd rather see, you know, my home country win. But at the same time, like tip of the cap to these guys, all three Brazilians in the event stepped up and like skyrocketed up the ratings. And now you have Idolo at number five, like he's in the top five, Gabriel and Yago, right there are solid tier B. Um, it was impressive to see. And, and I read this comment in stab dude. And it said something like, you know, I like a mean Gabby surfing better than a happy Gabby. And I like <laughs> a happy Italo better than I like a mean Italo. And it's like, yeah. they, they've kind of transformed and dude, happy Italo is absolutely on fire right now. I don't know if you guys have seen, and and by the way, go, you can go to my YouTube channel and see yesterday's surf, but Idolo's like switch footing. He's, he's going switch foot. He's going backwards. He's doing <laughs> like chop hops and airs. And at one point, and somebody picked it out. I saw it when I was editing the video, but somebody in the comments said, look at, did you see there's a butterfly following Idolo down the line? <laughs> like the magic is back. Like, do I now have to pick him in tier A because of the butterfly? I don't know. But anyway, my top pick was, my number one was the Brazilian Storm, and I'll jump right into um, number two, which it's hard to argue with. You know, Ryan Callanan surprised the mm. shit out of me. Like, I can't believe some of the tubes that that guy got, and he destroyed my fantasy team, but oh, I absolutely gorgeous. loved what he was doing. Mm. My incredible Ryan Callanan and and Liam O'Brien. I mean, he didn't. I mean, he got knocked out fairly mm. early. His tube riding, his technical tube riding, is insane. Like I said this before, it's John S. Like he takes off no hands and pumps no hands. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, he's in, he's incredible. He's so technical on his backhand tube riding. Um, but uh, speaking of technical backhand tube riding, the GOAT, like, I was pretty stoked. I mean, he beat Ethan in that round of 16 heat, but it just goes to say when there's waves of serious consequence, the GOATs, to me, he's, he's top five any day of the week, whether it's Pipeline, Tahiti. Um, I mean, I would have given him a 10 on that on that that ride that he got with tickling the foam ball monster. Mm. Um, you know, coming back into the channel off the ski, there was a, I think it was a minute left on the clock, got his board back, paddled out in the lineup. Whether you agree or disagree, he got the score. Uh, there's 30 seconds to go, 20 seconds. I think he took off with 15 seconds to go. To oh, me, was, I think it was four seconds, but he, yeah, he did a, he pulled another rabbit out of the goat hat once again. And I have to be honest, like I didn't, I didn't love that moment. I, I didn't love that moment because what, what hurts my surfing soul is that there was a jet ski involved in a pickup and a board change and a rush back out. And I guess that's part of the game now, but old school me likes a paddle kind of, I don't know, gladiator, more gladiator esque type role. And yeah. Ethan had such a good wave, man. That's what killed me. Kelly's follow-up wave was better, but he all he needed was the backup, and he took off on the wrong wave. He made a mistake, and I think he knows it. Um, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't asking him about it on the beach. Um, he he's down there with his old man traveling. Have you ever seen his dad, dude? He's a mountain. His dad's a huge guy, and you see him coming from a mile away. Yeah, Ethan's dad. So I saw him and I was like, yeah, let's ask him how that goat he went. No, let's not do that. Hey, I'm looking through. There are a ton of comments. 
And usually Howley Heidi is all over this and helping me out. Um, but I'm going to go through some of these. Hi, Rachel. Um, thanks for joining us. Greg Smith, Bahine, whole comp was cool. Um, let me see what I got. XWSL judges. Aiden says he talked to some XWL judges, and both of them said that they would have given Gabriel the perfect heat. I don't think he got a 20. I think he got a 25, dude. As the one where he like you does the, the double double yeah. kiss. What's that? You are on the Brazilian um, storm. I, it's, it's, I just I respect the talent, dude. And he's so good. He's so good. He's hey, so I'm going to give you one thing to think about. What I forgot to say before when I said the Brazilian storm. Imagine this: you win the Shiseido Tahiti Pro, but you're not in the Olympics for your home country. That's a shocker. Like let let that sink in for a moment. Idlo will not be in the Olympics. <laughs> that is oh. that is not cool, dude. Like imagine that. Um, okay, let's, yeah, you know where you know where this is going to go to, but maybe we'll we'll hold that thought next. <laughs> we'll we'll hold that thought until we talk about the Olympics. Susie Hernandez, um, somebody somebody in here. Hi, Susie. Welcome back. I'm stoked to have you guys. Francisco, hi from Peru. Welcome from Peru. Love the channel. Thank you. And I was looking for somebody asked about Sophie McCulloch. I I know she's broken her back. Um, I'm not sure what the update is, but I think she's in like, dude, I think she's in a body cast, but I didn't want to go she's off on that tangent necessarily. Go ahead. You know stuff? Yeah, she, she's on the mend. It's I don't think it's as bad as what first expected. She did it at the box when she was at Margaret River. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, a, sh a couple of months recovery. So I'd say she's halfway through. So hopefully, in another month, hopefully she'll, um, you know, get back in the water. Wow, a month is quick. I thought she was going to be out for a long time, and unfortunately, she's got to go back through the C the QSCS grind. Um, and speaking of which, I want to go back to Ramsey and say he would be a contender for rookie of the year if he didn't get Liam O'Brien out of it because of the freaking injury. And they've got to do something about it. It's not fair. What they should yep. do is maybe have a co-rookie of the year for those that were injured because Ramsey would be your rookie. Well, would he? Ramsey would probably, I think he's leading in the rankings. We're going to see in a moment when we go to tier B. Um, hey, great comments, you guys. Malibu Surf Coach, Welcome. Um, Gabby was my power surfer. Good call. I think, uh, yeah. I think quite a yeah. few people had him. Did you have him? Yeah, I did my power surfer. Yeah. It didn't help you out though, did it, mate? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, man. Jeez, I, I dude, I have to take my wins when I can get them. Um, uh, cause it doesn't it's... happen often. Um, go ahead. What were you going to say? I, you smoke me, mate. Well and truly. <laughs> uh, I think, I think we're going to get there. Um, you, uh, you were like three hundreds. I was like 200. So it's not a huge difference. I think, yep. um, Howley Heidi was in the low one hundreds. So, um, congratulations to her. Let's go to who is your next, what was your final Tahiti? And then we'll move on to El Salvador. Oh, I think I covered it, mate. I mean, obviously Ramsey, obviously Taddy and, and, and the other girls for Heaney. And then that Kelly moment. You know, like I said before, I just think he's still top five in, in waves of serious consequence still. So just got a bit of a spot for the GOAT, 52 years of age, still performing at that level. It's it's incredible. Yeah, I have to I have to give him that too. And you said before, he is definitely in in that top group, in that elite group of tube riding specialist. And I think, I think you're going to see him perform again in Fiji as well. Like he's no stranger to that place. Um, I can't wait to see that event, but I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, no. Susie Hernandez, poor JJF. He's been in, he has not had a win yet. I think he's been in two, wait, three. He's got three runner ups, I believe. Pipe, Margaret yeah, River, Ma Tahiti. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. John. He's no. got to be yes. hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just going to move into my final, my, my final moment for Tahiti. 
Dude, the, we take for granted, and I've said this before, we take for granted the camera angles that the WSL gives us. They had a straight on view from the tower. They had a water kind of to the right from the tower. They had an in the tube, and then they had another floating angle. And like to get all four angles for the judges who, I got to say, there's a lot of controversy in the chat and there's a lot of controversies in all the chats, but can you imagine, Tebow, being a judge and having to judge the micro incremental changes inside the tube and how are you going to assign a 9.7 to that or a 10 or a, I mean, a 10, I think is a 10, but a 9.67 from all these judges, it, it's, it's a tough gig. It is a tough gig. And you know what? I think it came down to how you maneuvered through the foam ball. Like if you were mm. behind the foam ball and, and somehow have the skill to skate over it, and only so many surfers did, um, that was that was those in, those small increment points, I think, that were given. Uh, it's like Gabby, Gabby's 10. He was so deep behind the foam yeah. ball. And just, yeah, and he rides he, when you see him take off. He, he's already got his front foot sort of quite, quite up the board, and just just got that skill and that cat-like uh, ability just to float over the foam ball in a massive pit. It's insane. Yeah, I think all of them that are showing that their cat-like reflexes in the foam ball. And I think being deep helps and size of the wave helps. Um, I loved all of that. Um, and and I was going to pick a kook for yes. for Tahiti. What's your kook for Tahiti? I wanted it bigger. I wanted really? to see it, I wanted to see it bigger where surfers, you see the surfers that are, that are going to go or are going to pull back. Um, I wanted to see it a couple more feet bigger. Um, yeah. I, um, I just think it would have been interesting to see who really want, wanted it. Is um, God, that that is – I didn't think about it. To be honest, I was so involved in it, I didn't think about it. But, yes, another couple feet of 2014 for sure. And it, it the way it – it doesn't really get bigger. It sucks out it, it, to see it from that. That's the other angle, the drone angle to see it all come off that reef from that, from up high, you realize right. it just comes from nothing. And to see oh, it yeah. bigger is actually to see it thicker and wider. So yeah, that would have been cool. I mean, what are they going to do if it's a toe swell? You know what I mean? Oh, they won't run it when it's a toe swell, but um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But you know that drone footage is—it's incredible. You really see how that really does bend. It's sort of horseshoes. Yeah. It's yeah, it's crazy. A lot of people in here. Holly, nice to see you. Ray, welcome back, dude. I, it's been a minute. Um, and Ray asked, "What happened with the tower?" There was a lot of controversy about it, and I believe they made some concessions and they worked it out. And it's not as high impact as it initially was. I don't know all the details. But Matahi's um, Instagram feed was a lot less, you know, critical of the Olympics. I think that the footers they put in weren't as damaging. So I don't have all the information, but I know it's out there. That's what I do know. Um, and I'm going to slide right into my coop to wrap up Tahiti. My coop is going to continue to be that the WSL cuts from live broadcast. There's interviews going on and you can see people in the background or, oh, now we're taking off or now we're going to cut to commercial. I'm always going to be the guy who criticizes the interview during a Tahiti event, which is all time epic. you yeah. got to show that, man. you got to show the live version of it, even if you right. have to have a commercial in the corner or like some of these these Twitch streamers have commercial around their stream and then pulls in and pulls out. I mean, do something creative, man, or charge me. Take my money. If it's going to be Tahiti, like you said earlier, here's my money. I will pay to watch that. That was, yep. that's like UFC type of shit right there. And uh, thoroughly entertaining. Um, I think we're moving on. Any other yeah. thoughts on Tahiti? Let me read some of these comments. 
I miss you, Holly Heidi. I wish you were here to pull up the comments. Um, they say they will dismantle it after every comp. ISA released a specific sheet on it today. Interesting. Um, I like to hear that for the tower and the environment. Yeah, the women sounded happy on the glass, and they went into. Yeah, I thought. I thought. Um, yeah, the men and women both. I mean, that was an incredible event. I don't even know how to say that anymore. Have a bonsai brew. You know, we're going to take a bonsai brew break, everybody. And T-Bone and I are just going to sit here and stare at the camera. I mean, what the, the hell is that? Come you on, have you guys. You would have a beer break, wouldn't you? It's probably a bit early for a beer for me. What I have, by the way, later on in that- trivia, which we now call Surf and Turf, and I have the turf trivia question. You're going to have the surf trivia question. If they're, look Roger. what I have. For the oh. American winner... I'm going to give you a pills and t-shirt and a pills and beer. But if it's somebody from outside, I can't do that outside the country. I'm not even supposed to do it in the U S but I can get away with it there. Um, but trivia is coming up and our picks are coming up in a moment for those of you waiting for the picks. But what I want to do is move on. Hey, let's look at the surf forecast, dude. Let me see if I can pull that up. It is hot off the press. You are on the, on the ground in El Salvador. Come on, dude. Give us the surf I'm, report. Oh, I'm going to give you the surf report. Let me pull up. Let me share my screen. I'm going to get the smaller version of you and me. Let's do this, baby. Okay. All right. Let's not do it that small. There we go. Or maybe I should. Maybe I should do it like this. No, not like this. Like this. Oh, well, we're producing. Um, You may not be able to see that, but... Uh, let me tell you what's going on from the ground. It is scorching hot. It's 90 degrees on the beach. The water is the same temperature. I had a surf the other day. T-Bone, I love this soft old man wave that's right in front of where I'm staying. It's probably 200 yards that way. And if you catch the wave, it's 200 yards that way. I love this spot. And I'm out there riding my fun board, just having a blast. And the water is as hot as the air. And... It feels good, but it doesn't feel good. But I can tell you my body bends and moves way better in warm weather weather than it does in the wetsuit. But um, as far as the surf goes, today, Surfline was claiming, you can see it there, it's really small, but they're claiming four to six feet. And I got down to the the beach and Idolo was there. And Idolo was hyped up, man. I mean, I was there as, as it's getting light. Sparrows, if you will. And... Idolo's there. He's getting out of the water. And I'm like, what was he surfing from midnight? And a few people <laughs> showed up and, and it was like immediately the wind was on it and it wasn't that good. I didn't even, I didn't even uh, post what I shot today. I have a few clips. I might put them on Instagram, but I, I went back later and the guys down there that were shooting and by the way, one of them is hand positive. This dude shoots some awesome video. You guys should follow him on Instagram. And I was like, hey, dude, um, how? when did it get better? And he's like, oh, yeah, a couple hours ago. And like, I missed John John and Katie, everybody. But I hadn't seen many pro surfers. Jack's been here. Betty Lou's been here. And a few others, Elo, have been putting in their reps every day. But... I haven't seen some of the other big names um, and Brees has been here surfing, but I think everyone is just now pouring in from Tahiti. And the two people I did see out was um, I saw Griffin and Crosby and they were surfing really well this evening. And, it, and I don't know if you guys watch my preview video, it's on my, it's on my channel. And there's an air that Griffin does in the very first minute of that video where he does a full rotation and lands. He did one of those right in front of me live. And it's even more spectacular when you can see him doing like high speed run down the face and then hitting it. And you can hear the noise of him going back, back, back and land it. It's, it's something to behold and to see pro surfer surfing. The last one I saw is my favorite surfer is going to be my power surfer is going to be my pick. So don't rely on my picks later on in this, you guys, because I have to tell you, like, I fall in love immediately with whoever I just saw. But that's what's <laughs> going on on the beach. And 
T-Bone, if we look at the surf forecast, um, tomorrow should be pretty fun. And then we're scheduled for the 6th. And it's saying here, um, God dang, I can't even read it. It's too small. Let me look here for a second. It's saying on the 6th, first day of the waiting period. Now, this thing's changed three times. It's saying it's 6 to 8 feet and windy. That's the first day of the waiting period. Second day of the waiting period, 8 to 10 feet and windy. I say it's doubtful, but guess what? Saturday and Sunday, the 8th and 9th, 6 to 8 feet, and it looks pretty clean. And you know that the WSL loves them a weekend audience. They, they, will definitely, they will definitely try to fit something in there. I'm going to shoot tomorrow. I think it's going to be pretty good, 4 to 6 feet. And then I see a couple lay days, and everybody's going to run up to the waterfall and have a good time up there. And um, probably get a rough surf somewhere. Uh, but I'll be covering it. And you guys, I will be down on the beach each day of the waiting period before it, the event starts and talking about it. And I don't know if I'm going to go live YouTube or Instagram. If anyone has a preference, I usually go live on YouTube. But Instagram, I don't know. I've just started to embrace it, t -Mone. Any thoughts on that forecast, man? How does that affect your team? Um, well, it's not really going to change much if you ask me. Um, I, like I've never actually seen it at it in, in all its glory. I, I, I'm mm. hearing it, it's got multiple barrel sections and big long lines. I mean, it, it's not going to alter my, my team at all, mate. It's good to see a little bit of swell. I, I would say they will be hoping to knock this off um, over the weekend. Do you think um, get it get it done and dusted? I think so. I think they could use that break. So there'll be two lay days. Hi, Katie. <laughs> you. Um, I'm doing a loose shaka, by the way. I'm not doing the full like. <laughs> Let me answer your question. Um, two days, Saturday and Sunday. They busted out. Possibly Monday, finals day. And the thing is over. And I mean, because we have a smaller field for these events. I love post cut. We already talked about that because we have this kind of matchup and the way the heats run it's fast, man. I, I can't get enough of it. So yeah, they could have it as you say, done and dusted Sunday, Mon no Saturday, Sunday, Monday, they could have it done and dusted. Um, is this the Tahiti swell that's coming to El Salvador? Yes, it is. Um, there's two parts and, and I heard some talk on the beach today, and the reason why everyone was late in getting to El Salvador was because there was still swell in Tahiti after oh. the event. So people stayed and just Olympic warmed up or just enjoyed Tahiti. Like, it's yeah. kind of hard to... Dude, think about this. You just left Tahiti and got barrels of your life, and now you got to come surf a small, you know, kind of windy shoulder high wave. It's got to be like a full letdown. Like you're just like such a bummer, dude. Um, anyway, that's a surf forecast. I think they could knock it out by Monday. We're going to see. Um, how about we move into, oh, I didn't have this ready. How about we move into our favorite opening round heats? Let's pull that up real quick. Um, what was your, where the heck is it? Give me a second. Opening round. We're going to talk about T-Bone is going to pick his favorite opening round heat in the men's. And I'm going to pick my favorite open opening round heat in the women's. And let me see if I can pull that up now. Hey, technology, everybody takes me a moment. That's okay, man. Let's Let's try this one. Boom. There we go. go. There we go. So what was your, oh, wait, it's being partially blocked by an ad. I you love yourself. those ads. That's oh, okay. dude, they're, yeah. dude, they're so like. frustrating though, because you like click and then you go to the next page and it pops and you gotta click it off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you give it a shout out to my son, Joel Hardery? How did I say that? Hardery, Hardery yeah. His yeah. fantasy team is suffering. Hey, 
let me tell you something, Joel. We're all suffering. <laughs> <laughs> and after this event, T-Bone especially. So I got to rub it in a little bit. But yeah, we're all suffering. Joel, it's here's the thing. Those of us that know a lot about surfing are having a hard year. Do you agree with that, T-Bone? A hundred percent. I have you, a hard you know, year. What's that? <laughs> I have a hard year every year. <laughs> so that means we just know too much about surfing, Joel. So that's what's really going on. Um, those ads suck, dude. Every time you move, you got to click the ad off. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so T-Bone, tell us about your favorite heat in the opening round uh, of the Mets. Cool, mate. Well, I'm looking forward in watching Heat 5, Italo, Gabby, and Leo. It's the full Brazilian barbecue versus the Italian stallion. <laughs> it's, a, think... it's, it's a remarkable <laughs> heat, dude. I... You've got, uh, yeah, like you, like you said before, a happy Italo and, a, and an angry Gabby is, is lethal. And I think... Both Italo, apart, you know, he does come across with that happy demeanor. He can smell and taste blood, and so can Gabby. Um, now, now Italo's in the final five, but Gabby's not. I find this heat's really key for Gabby, even though we've still got Brazil and Fiji to come. I think he wants to get a really good start and skip the elimination round. So these two guys. I think last year, I think Italo got the nod on Gabby um, in the opening round last year or the year before. I just think this uh, these two goofy footers, uh, they're going to be on fire and not, not discounting uh, Leo, but I just think it would be all about these two, the, the two Brazilians. It's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, I love this heat. I... I've been torn on whether to pick Elo or not. And by the way, let's let's say I'm going to go ahead and just say I'm going to pick Elo right here. I'm going to push and check this out. Here are the percentages from the fans. Elo, 27%. Gabriel Medina, 64%. And Leonardo Fervanti, 9%. And I have to tell you, there is a video that I shot of Jess Leo. And I think there's one clip in there of Betty Lou that you can see Leo is so good. I mean, everyone is going to be so good at a right point break. It's not like somebody's a specialist or a tube specialist and this is Tahiti. Everyone's going to be able to surf this wave. But I mean, Leo really impressed me. And, you know, part of this comes down to luck and part of it comes down to heat intelligence and all that kind of thing. But a lot of it comes from mental and the mental game and just being hungry for it. And I think both those guys, this is going to be a dogfight. I can't wait to see this heat. It, it, when it looks smaller, it looks like um, the, the section can, can, can race away. So I'm thinking Italo has got to be the fastest on tour, even on his backhand. Um, I just think it's going to, yeah, I'm picking him to, to, to win the opening round. So mm. I'm going I'm going against all the punters there. I'm one of those twenty seven percent. I would I would argue that Gabby is low key fast and gets by sections in a different way where Elo use more uses more movement. Elo might be like, let's say Gabby goes ninety eight miles an hour and Elo goes hundred, <laughs> but it, his body's going one hundred and ten and Gabby's is going like forty. I don't know. That's a terrible miles per hour, case per hour analogy. But um, I see uh, someone on oh, Susie Hernandez says Chianca got the wild card. We're going to get to that. I love um, that Chianca got the wild card. And that brings another person into the Brazilian storm. Um, I can't wait to get to TRC. Let's make some picks, dude. The first thing we're going to do, though, before the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to go to the women's and I'm going to talk about my heat and the women's that I'm looking forward to. And that is going to be, is it hiding? No, it's heat number one. Check this out. Joanne DeFay, Carolyn Marks, and Tyler Wright, who are all here, who I all saw, I all, all of them I watched surf. 
Joanne had a couple good waves this evening. Caroline it was small when she was out, but she's doing her, you know, backhand bash. That's that's so good. And by the right, I didn't really see her get a wave. I saw her get one little scrap, and then she came in. But she's here. And remember, last year's finals was mm -hmm. Carolyn Marks and Tyler Wright. And <laughs> and live on the show is I forget the name of your dog, T Bone. There were a T Bone, dude. Elo is pure cocaine as a human being, but his disposition was so different in his interviews this time that it really stuck out for me. He's showing personal growth. I, I think that shows Holly exactly what I'm talking about is like he's kind of back to happy elo that's a terrible like simplified way to say it but he's really enjoying surfing again you can see it in his surfing and then the other part of it is reynos hayes who i haven't seen in years and i i saw him on the beach and reynos is the billabong coach i i knew him from way back in the hawaiian days and this is 20 something years ago and since then, I've gotten gray hair and older, and Reynos Hayes looks like the exact same Reynos Hayes that was coaching back then. If you don't know who he is, he's a low-key, really good coach, and he's just so chill, dude. He's like the Buddha of surf coaches. And him and Idolo don't seem like a great match, but they're a perfect match. And I think Reynos has really helped Idolo with that. I went off on a tangent. Well, um, oh, look at the I'm just going to get rid of this dog, mate. <laughs> Two seconds. Yeah, go for it. I'm going to talk about the women's heat. So um, Joanne DeFay, by the way, you guys remember, she won She won Bells. Oh, no, she didn't win Bells. She was in the final at Bells against Katie Simmers. And, yes, Katie Simmers kind of rolled her in that very last minute, um, caught that wave at the very end of the heat. But, but I was just saying that Joanne DeFay – um, was in the finals at Bells. And even though Bells is sort of, if Bells was a, a boy that was growing to be a man, it would dream to be Puna Roca. Yeah. And, and a, a bigger, stronger version. It wouldn't be a fat little kid like Bells Beach is. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was meant to get, get a rise out of you, T-Bone. Yeah. Um, Elo, oh, check this out, Kevin Hart. Elo or Kanoa for survival, dude. I don't touch survival. Survival is a personal thing, and and I think you have to follow your instinct on that. Um, I'll say they're they're good picks. If you still have those guys, in they're still good picks. And what's weird in survival league, we're just going to go on a little tangent. In survival league, you definitely need to. Um, Pick as you go and pick the best person that you have. But um, yeah, you got to play this next year. There's a lot of strategy involved in that. You have a lot of fun. And someone earlier talked about um, bet online. Why aren't the odds up yet? Do they wait until the last second? And I'm going to eventually make a video on betonline.ag mm. and on what we have now is underdog fantasy, which is kind of cool. I played it. For Tahiti, it was pretty fun. Um, again, I'm not a huge gambler. I just little chump change. I throw it around and just have a good time. I'm gonna talk about all that in an upcoming video. Anyway, um, I was saying T-Bone to play survival, and I've been talking way too much in this video. Anything to add about the women's heat? Joanne DeFay, Carolyn Marks, and uh, Tyler Wright. Yeah, it's um, I'm back in Caralupo, Marks. 100%. I actually watched the replay of the final last year. She, yeah, she just looks looks on point. She's powerful. She's got a great backhand. One of the best on tour in the women's. So, uh, Caralupo marks for me, mate. 100%. I think it's a great pick, and I think that's what's going to happen for me as well. Let's get into the picks. Um, well, let's, get let's get on it. Damn, dude. Uh, where are we at? Give me a moment. Fantasy surf. Here we go. All right. So let's start in tier A. We're going to do a rapid fire round. Tebow, you start us out or you want me to start us out? I was going to start yeah. us out. You go, um, dude. 
in tier A, we have Brisa Hennessy, uh, Katie Simmers, and Molly Picklum. And I know it's hard to see, but for those of you driving in your car on the podcast, um, I'm going to name everyone and we'll pick them. And I'm going to tell you right now, Katie Simmers will probably win this event, but I'm picking Brisa Hennessy. I'm going against the grain. T-Bone, go ahead. You can pick Molly now. Dude, after watching your video of Brissa, she looks on point. <laughs> Dude, but, I tell you, man, she's very versatile. She rides big tubes and she has that flick snap thing. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty good. Looked, look good. But you know what? I'm going Katie because I think the point of difference is that end section where where the, the, the good the good guys will go to the air. And I think Katie's got that in her repertoire. So I'm going to go Katie. I, and I think it's a good call. Um, this is a flip of the coin for me. I love that we're both going in a different direction. Let's go to the next, Tier B. You get to uh, talk about this one. I'm going to name them off when I can open this. Okay, so in Tier B, we have Joanne DeFay. Is that showing up there, T-Bone? Yeah. Yeah, in sure is. Mate. Tier B, we have Joanne DeFay, Carolyn Marks, Gabriella Bryan, Tatiana Western Webb, Betty Lou, Sakota Johnson, and Tyler Wright. Um, who you pick there? I'm going Caralupo Marks, defending champ. You know, she beat a lot of good girls last year. It's it, it's a no brainer for me. What about your? Oh, oh I'm going to go Carolyn Marks as well. We're both going to pick Caroline. Um, who's your who's your follow up to that? I'm going Betty Lou only because she looked really sharp on your on your video that you shot. <laughs> you, you're you're influencing me, man. <laughs> I'm I'm just showing the evidence, bro. The thing that you're not seeing though is I didn't see Katie today. Uh, I didn't see. I, I barely saw Caroline surf, and I haven't seen a lot of Gabriella Bryan, but I know how hard she works. I'm going to go with Gabriella Bryan. For me, it's between Gabriella and Betty Lou Sakura Johnson, just based on how the bracket matchups could end up. I'm going to go with Gabriella. Although, dude, you can make an argument for all the ladies here. Um, easy, easy. Tati, Tati, I think it's coming off a big high. It could be a letdown for her, but man, don't count her out, dude. They love that backhand snap. She My serves yeah. trestle so well. And then, Tyler was in the finals last year, dude. So it's like, no, no. you got to leave somebody on the table. Good luck, everybody out there. Hey, why don't you tell me in the comments who you guys have picked? Caroline has a dead animal on her head. Dude, that's mean. Hold on, Skate Army. You can't say that. In fact, Heidi always says, oh, my God, I love her hair. Anyway, um, let's go with Tier C. Tier C is, uh, oh, we know who Tier C is. I can't wait to see who you pick here. Tier C is Sawyer Lindblad, Lakey Peterson, and Leilani McGonagall. And what do you say to that, T-Bone? After watching Sawyer Lindblad at Margaret River on her backhand on the Margaret River rides, she can go 12 o'clock. She's quite radical, quite gets vertical. I think it's going to suit her at Punta Roca. She's my Tier C. I think that's a great pick. I watched Lakey Peterson surf and I was not going to pick her. And I, every time I pick her, it does not go well, but I really liked the way she was surfing and she's got, she's got a lot of experience. I'm going to take Lakey Peterson and that could be the difference for us. Um, in those picks, those two picks right there. Let's read. Darren has Katie, Caroline, Betty Lou and Lakey. So they're splitting the difference between the two of us. There's some great picks there. Um, let's move into the men's. What do we got? Hang on. All right, men's tier A. Cool. All right, here's where the rubber meets the road or however they say that. All right, let me read them off. John John Florence, Griffin Colapinto, Jack Robinson, Ethan Ewing, Ilo Fajera, and Jordy Smith. And by the way, those are in order of how they're ranked on the tour. Um, and that's how the tiers work. If you take tier A, B, and C and just match it up to the rankings, that's how they get in those tiers. 
in case the WSL takes forever to post like they did again for this event. Anyway, um, I'm going to go first on this one, if you don't mind, because I want to get it over with because I'm so conflicted. I am definitely taking Ethan Ewing. He is my power surfer. And I just love his, I just love his turns too much. He's showing, he's trying to show the ability to do airs. And I watch him do a couple and he's starting to pull them off more. But I think, and I think an air game is important here, but Ethan Ewing can win on turns alone. And I think he's just too good and too polished. So I take Ethan Ewing and I'm going to back that up with Elo. No, Griffin Colapinto. Oh. Wow. Wow. Uh, how do you go past the stats in a guy who's been in the finals the last two years and won it last year? Oh, no. Your turn. Ding, your turn. I, I thought we were going to pick the same. Listen, I, I'm going Ethan, Ethan as well. He's got the best rail game on tour, if not in the world. Uh, and I really think he needs to consolidate his, his top five position. So, Ethan, 100%. Now, my second pick, Idolo Ferreira. I mean, he <laughs> the, guy, the guy's on a high. He's jumped 11 spots. You know, he he quartered in 22. He semi-finaled in 23, if I'm not mistaken. The guy looks so fast in those videos I was watching. He actually surfs way better than me as a natural footer when he switched I foot. Saw that. <laughs> I, thought, I said this. the same thing when I saw it live, dude, when I shot that. It was insane. Um, it, it's such a hard choice, and I see some of these coming in. Here's some of your picks. Holly Johnson, um, she's picked Brisa, Tati, Caroline, and Sawyer. Dude, these are Katie, Caroline, Tyler, Sawyer. Um, it's Craig Ford's pick. Greg is Brisa, Tati, Caroline, and Sawyer. And by the way, for those of you driving in your car or watching on the rebroadcast, I'm reading the chat from the live stream. You can put your own comments into the rebroadcast or, you know, honk twice in your car if you're going <laughs> Brisa. <laughs> All right. So, um, and then Darren went EE -E and Griff. And then we're going to read the rest of yours in a minute, Darren. We're going to go to round, not round. We're going to go to tier B. Good tier B. B. Wow. I, Dude, I have not, I got to be honest, I have not completely figured out what I'm going to do here. Um, I'm going to do the opposite of you. <laughs> Hold on. Let's read them off. Let's read them off. Jake Marshall, Baron Mamiya, Cole Hauschman, Kanoa Igarashi, Ramsey Bukaim, Gabriel Medina, Rio Aida, Crosby Cola Pinto, Ryan Callanan, Liam O'Brien, Yagadora, and Imai Kalani Duvall. That's a long list. It's, um, I'm kidding, T-Bone, but I do want to hear some of your picks. I'm not going to copy your picks, but I might go the opposite direction on one or two. I think we're going to pick the same. I think two or three, we're going to pick the same here. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, go. Why don't you do two? I'll do two, and we'll go back and forth. Um. I want to. Can I do one and give you my last three because they're all very similar? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. That sounds good. Okay. So first one, Liam O'Brien. Um, nice. He made, it, made it to the semis last year. You know, uh, he's he's maybe not on par with Ethan, but his rail game and he's so radical. I mean, some of his forehand hacks. So I'm going Liam O'Brien. And I'm I'm going Liam O'Brien as well. I had wow. him ear, dude. Yes. I did. I had him earmarked. The last time we did this in Tahiti, all the guys you picked, I had them earmarked, except for I took Cole Hausman and you took uh, somebody else. I can't remember. But um, yeah, here let me rattle off a couple of mine. So Liam O'Brien, Jake Marshall. Um, I'm gonna take Ramsey's backhand here. And then the last one, I'm going to wait. It's going to be between, oh, my God. Wait a minute. Yeah, Real, Real Medina's there. And Yagadora's there. Why don't I give you mine, mate, and you can think about it a bit more. <laughs> Jeez, dude, this is so hard. Hold on. No, I'm going to solidify this. Jake Marshall, Ramsey Bukayam, Gabriel Medina, 
and what was the other one I said? Jake Marshall, Ramsey Bukayem, Gabriel Medina, and Liam yeah, O'Brien. No. There you go. There you go. Okay. Nice one, mate. Well, yeah, obviously Liam O'Brien was my first one. Now, the next three guys, they're all big, powerful, goofy footers. If wow. Punta, Roca, Punta Roca gets overhead, these guys are going to go upside down vertical. So it's Ramsey, Paul Hauschman, and Gabby Medina. It's a nice. Goof. It's a goof off. It's a goof off, mate. It's nothing better watching a goofy come off the bottom on their backhand, especially when it's overhead. It's so these three, yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be insane. I totally, I agree with that. The backhand strength on these rights. The thing you mentioned earlier was the speed and sometimes this thing will run and there are tube sections. When this gets bigger, you, you haven't seen it at its full glory. And I've only seen little hints of it last year before the event. It is a real wave. Like it, it looks like J Bay, dude. It's, it's not J Bay at all. I would not. I think that's an unfair comparison. I think Jay Bay is in another league all, uh, of its own, but I think it's in that conversation. It's it's almost like Scorpion Bay with more power for those of you who have been down there. Um, but anyway, yeah, so speed, I think I, I, I hate leaving Cole on the table. I, was, I don't know what he's going to do. And remember, he won Bells. Again, right-hander. Um I think that those are great picks. Let's move on to tier C. I, I'm going to read a couple of these. Skate Army has Gabe, Jake, Crosby, Yago. Now, see, the other one I didn't like leaving out there was Yago. Um, you know, he's, but I'll save him because he's going to go to Rio and win. And by the oh. way, they they announced the the wild cards for Rio, and it's it's Jao Chianka again. It's Luana Silva. And guess who's going to be in there? Our friend Sammy Pupo. What a tough tier C that's going to be. But we're jumping ahead. Yeah. Um. All right. Where are we? We are going to tier C. Takes me a second to click over there. I'm going to read them off. Tier C is Steph Moniz, Leonardo Fiervanti, Matthew McGillivray, Connor O'Leary, Jao Chianka, and the local wild card Brian Perez. Um, it's I hard, still haven't, I still haven't made my decision, but I'm going to make it right now. Um, I'm taking Leonardo and then, geez, and then Connor who did well last year, Joao Chianca and Brian Perez. I I'm, I'm going to put Seth Moniz and Matthew McGill very off to the side. I, I wouldn't pick them based on what I see here. But I know someone out there well and probably <laughs> beat me in fantasy. But I'd leave uh -huh. these other three, um, Connor Joao and Brian Perez. I'm going to take Leonardo. I'm going to turn it over to you, T-Bone. Help me make this decision. Oh, mate, it's actually quite hard. But I, I need to throw in um, some natural footers just to balance up my, my team. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going the Italian stallion, Leo. And um, I'm going um, Zhao Xianka. Now, I believe it's his first contest back from injury, isn't it? It, uh, it is. It is. Uh, hoping, hoping he's going to um, just refine some of his hand movements. Um, that's what sometimes uh, gets me distracted of not picking him. But he's an insane surfer. So, I mean, he finished, what, top five a couple of years ago. So I'm going Zhao for a for a pretty solid comeback result. I've seen a couple of clips of him and he looks as good as he ever did, especially in smaller waves. And he lives on a wave that he can get a lot of, you know, runs on at their Sequarema. But I, I'm still concerned about the injury and his comeback. I'm going to pass and now it's between Connor O'Leary and Brian Perez. And I picked Brian Perez before, and he's gone out in the elimination round. I keep watching, I watch a guy surf. And he just, if he can stay focused, 
he can win. Like, I just think competitively, Conor O'Leary's better, but there's some magic to Brian Perez. I'm here in, in, in El Salvador. I've got to pick the local. I'm going Brian Perez. I know I'm crazy. Uh, dead air. Every, it's dude. It's dead air. Everyone's like, "What, dude? You're doing what?" Go ahead, yeah. T-Bone. Your reaction. I, I was just reading a comment by Craig Ford saying Geordie said he'll slap the next guy that compares it to Javo. Do you remember that comment? Do you? I remember he said that live. He said that live on air. I think last year. The next person who says that, yeah, should get slapped in the face. I think he said exactly that. Everyone's Wait, got Joao and Leo. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say, when you see Jordy, mate, are you going to go up to him and say, hey, I reckon on its day, Punta Rocket can be like Jay <laughs> Get it on. I want to see it. No, no, I'm going to flip it around and go, you know, on its day, Jay Bay almost kind of looks like Punta Roca. <laughs> I think that would even be even better. He'd be go like, Gru. No, I, I don't want to mess with the big fella. I... I I don't know how's he gonna do here. I, well, we haven't picked him, but in, you know, it's he's a bit of a sleeper, isn't he? Um, he, he sure you, is. You would think you'd, you'd say Geordie's a sleeper, but he could do really well. He could do really I know, well. No, that's what makes this whole game so hard. Let me read some of these. Um, Leo's due for a good result. You know, Leo's down at like. I think he's at the bottom of the rankings now, dude. I mean, it shows right here. In fact, I could tell you he's at 22 in the rankings based on where he is in the tier. Um, Brian Perez is amazing. Watch him rip on OSD video. Yeah, he he is. I just think he loses focus sometimes and he tries silly things. But if if here's here's why I'm picking that too, is because if Puna Roca is good he'll bring that local knowledge to it. I'm not trying to sell anybody out there. In fact, I'm telling you to run as far as you can away from my picks most of the time. But um, I'm that's what I'm feeling about him. Um, I picked him too. Susie Hernandez, did you pick? No. Yeah, you might have. Um, Leo and Connor is is popular, and I can understand why. That's, that's what I was thinking. Hey, dude, we are at an hour... Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to do trivia. I have – it's a surf and turf. Do you have a surf question? I have a turf question. Do you – you, you come up You come up with something while I take our first – while I make a uh, – take our first trivia question. Um, let's go back to the widescreen. Um, so – this will be rebroadcast. If you missed part of it and want to watch it again, I'll put it back on YouTube. It'll also be a podcast that you can listen to and you can get all the information on oldsurfdad.com. I also want to congratulate the winner of Tahiti, whose name, check out this name, it's Woke Tyler. Woke Tyler won for Tahiti and this dude's picks were really good. Like he had all the names in there. He had Ryan Cownan and Ramsey and um, hats off to him. And uh, what other information am I supposed to throw out there? Follow me on Instagram. I'll give updates from the shoreline. All right, let's do trivia. My trivia question is, what, and, and by the way, if you've won before, I want to open it up to new people. So if you won before, don't um, jump in and give up the answer. Mine's not too hard, but it's not too easy if you don't know it. It is this. What two, uh, I already blew it. Which countries, which countries are connected to El Salvador? Cool. That's my turf. Yes. Geography, geography. And what ocean? <laughs> what ocean is connected? You got a, you got a surf, you got a surf question. And by the way, what you're going to win you're going to want a map of there's a minimalist map on the website or a t-shirt. Screw it. Whatever you want. Go look in the store. Go look around. Um, Susie Hernandez says Costa Rica and Panama. That is incorrect. Uh, Malibu surf coach, Nicaragua and Panama. That is incorrect. 
Honduras, Guatemala, Pacific, Holly Johnson. We have a winner. Holly, um, I think you're the Holly that's in Discord. I'm not sure. But why don't you get in touch with me through the website and I'll set you up. And let's see, Mexico, Guatemala. And by the way, Nicaragua is a really good answer, but there's a bay there and it looks like it's connected, but it's not. And it's really confusing for me, but it goes down Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras. And then and then what's neat about it, I wish I had a map up. I don't have the technology at the moment. I'm outside of my control center at home. But if you see the map, El Salvador faces pure south and all the swell heads in there. And there's a little piece of Guatemala, by the way, that faces pure south. That could be the next maps to nowhere. Somebody's got to suss that out. Um, Dan, Dan Hardery, you were you were uh, just a touch slow on that one. Which comp Floripa? The Florianapolis. There is no Florianapolis comp yet, um, unless it's a QS. I don't know about. Okay, next trivia. What is your trivia question, T Bone? What do you got? Sure. Okay, so we, who won the bronze medal for men's in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics for surfing? Wow, that's a great one. Let me try to remember this. Oh, I know who it is. I know who it is. I, I can tell you, Italo won the gold medal. Yeah, I can tell you that. I can tell you all three. I, and oh, the right. silver one, the silver one is a bitter pill. The silver <laughs> one is a bitter pill. Okay, who is it? Uh, let's see. We have Igarashi, Kanoa, no. Greg Smith, yeah. an Aussie question mark. Jason, Josh, or no, Josh, Josh Bennyworth. Yeah. Ben Sorry, Devon. I... Yeah. So it looks like Josh Bennyworth was the first to get the answer. And Josh, get in touch with me through oldsurfdad.com. If you go to the about section, um, my contact form is down in the about section. And um, uh, go ahead. I was just going to shout out to old Namu. Uh, we got we got royalty in the house. Namu, Andrew Bromley, third in the world in fantasy. Um, he's uh, in the house at the moment. Yo, really? Yeah. Wait, it, Andrew Bromley, is, is he Namu. in your fantasy? Oh, that is Namu. He's third in, Namu. wait, in... In your league or in the overall? He came third in the world a couple of years ago. So that is. Um... Oh, that's that's like telling old footy stories on the couch, mate. That's past. <laughs> uh, Henry, come on, step up your game, mate. <laughs> it, yeah, I'm it, just it, kidding, bro. That's that's pretty uh, cool. It's hard to win this game. Hey, I, I, I've got one more quick one, mate, if you want, just a bonus one. Oh, you want to do a bonus one. Um, so ja Josh, get in touch with me. Cheers, boys. You, I'm an Aussie, so that was easy. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I wanted to say this. The silver medalist was Kanoa Igarashi, and that had to hurt because it was in Japan. And I know how bad he would have wanted that, to be a gold medalist in Japan. Can you imagine the sponsorship money that was on the table for that Ooh. one? Anyway... Um, we're going to do, I looks like we're going to do one last trivia question and then wrap this up. Dude, I, I love that last one. What do you got? Okay. Which female surfer scored a 10 in her semifinal heat at the Bonsoi Gold Coast Pro Challenger event at Snapper Rocks? Scored a oh, 10, geez. female surfer. Oh, I know this one. And this is this year. Yeah, I'll give you a tip. Uh, no, no, wait. Thinking, say say the question again. Say the question again. Which female surfer scored a 10-point ride in her semifinal heat on the Gold Coast this year? That was at the Bonsoi Gold Coast Pro, the Challenger Series event at Snapper Rocks. Dude, um, that a is a great hand. question. That was insane. It was next level tube riding skills. She's from... Oh, looks like someone's already got it. Oh, I'm funny too. And we pulled in. It's uh, it's Griffin. I think I have Griffin here. Yeah, it's Speaking Griffin O'Malley who is who I have. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, hold on. And Namu says he's 150th, ranked 150,000th right now, which yeah. is not true. But, um, dude, I think we're on that boat. You know, um, if you have any kind of show that has to do with fantasy, you're usually like in the in the middle of the pack or lower middle of the pack. It's a rough gig, dude. It's a rough gig. Aaron Brooks. And by the way, let's go back to your, your question. Tell us about that Aaron Brooks tube ride. Oh, it was insane. Um, she just took off pig dog in this pit behind the rock at Snapper. It was just, yeah, and I rode it for, I don't know how long, but just came out, 10-point ride. It was an uh, insane display of backhand tube riding by the young Aaron Brooks, who's going to be on the CT 100% representing Canada. So, Yeah, I can't believe, um, yeah, the rivalries that are going to be created when her and Sierra Kerr are onto the scene. It's going to be an incredible show. And I don't know if you've seen, I, I remember in the next event, what was it in Nervine? And she was standing next to Isabella Nichols and she's like tiny dude. I think she weighs 90 pounds. Her boards are like four foot 11 or something. I don't know what they are, but it's, it's insane. And she charges dude. I've seen shots of her at, can do and those places um hey griffin i think you're you might be the griffin i know i think you are um from the discord chat and if you guys want you can join our discord chat but anyway griffin get in touch through this surf through the old surf website in the about section you'll find my contact information and i think that's it dude that's it. that was an epic show yeah. What else you got? I think I, I think it's time for a coffee. It's probably another time for another one of your beers that you got there going, Dave. It's a bit, it's a bit early for me. If any of you want the pills and shirt and the pills and beer, and you live in the U.S., I know one of you does. Um, Holly, I think you're U.S. I'm not quite sure. If you're in the U.S., um, yeah, I can get you that too. That's an option. So let me know in the when you reach out uh let's see what this last one says does anyone know if sky brown surfs the cs wondering what lane she's going to go in i i have seen sky brown surf in the cs and the q no not in the cs in the qs she still needs to qualify for the cs but she did break her ankles skateboarding and that set her back a little bit but i think that she's realizing with the broken bones that it's time to go surfing but uh, she's such a good skateboarder. She could go for another Olympic uh, Olympic bid, maybe. Um, frothing for Kaipo. <laughs> uh, I'm ready for Kaipo, dude. By the way, you guys, um, you can also, I'm going to put this on my Instagram and my YouTube. If you have any questions for your favorite pro surfers, let me know. I'm going to probably start doing interviews. And hopefully they're as good as Adsy and Namu and T-Bone did on the Barrel Podcast. T-Bone is from the Barrel Podcast, and y'all should be listening. It is a good time with a couple Aussie blokes in the shred quarters. Um, parting words? Mate, looking forward to it. Um, while it's raining, I'm going to get the fire going, crack a bottle of Forrester Estate Red if you live in Margaret River, and uh, enjoy the show. Looking forward to your videos, Dave. And, uh, yeah, have a good time over Thanks. there, buddy. Thanks, brother. You. Thanks, everybody. And um, yeah, great show. Thanks for joining us. And we'll talk to you. Um, we'll do a follow up on this for the Rio event. See you then. You. You. All right.